Well, a few years, two or three, after we uh, organized the Dillard Judd Camp in Cookville, one of our members mentioned that nobody in the city of Cookville or Putnam County had ever erected a monument to the Confederate soldiers from, from Putnam County in this area. We, uh, we decided that situation had to be corrected. This was about the year 2000. And uh, we debated whether to try to get it put on Court Square, whether to buy a little piece of property, whether to put it in Cookville City Cemetery or where it would be best. And David Daniels did some checking and found a lot in uh, Cookville City Cemetery that was lot, not large enough for burial spaces, but it fit our monument just, I mean, perfectly. I believe it's six feet wide and about 20 feet long. Um, we also formed a committee. Walter Anderson was chairman, was chairman of that committee. And several people submitted a design for a Confederate monument. Uh, the one, of course, that's there was chosen from three or four five submittals. Uh, it was priced at two or three different monument works and the best price we got was twelve thousand five hundred dollars which uh, just about put us in a state of shock <laughs> but it was such a beautiful design some of us that were on the executive council of the Dillard Judd camp decided by George we could do that so uh, we continued to have raffles at camp meetings and we had several members um, of the Sons of Confederate Veterans, not all of them from our camp, that pledged or made real nice donations. We barely had enough money, which was 50% of the $12,500. We barely had 50% in the fall of 2003 when we, when we ordered that monument. We took just about everything we had in the monument fund and we you know, worked but a little over halfway toward our goal. We, uh, the, the city of Cookville, thanks to Judy Duke, allowed uh, the Dillard Judd Camp to have a uh, living history on the grounds of Cookville Museum and we had a, a Boston butt sales, old uh, barbecue and, and uh, we ran an ad in the local paper I will never forget an old gentleman, and he got out and with cane in hand and, and assisted by his wife, and uh, I was standing there and he said, I'd like to see the picture of the monument. So I led him over to an easel where I had the, the uh, picture sitting and he looked at it and, and uh, just nodded a, a approval. He said, well, I want to make a donation. He made the statement that he was a World War II veteran and that erecting monuments to any veterans was the right thing to do. I asked him where he was from. He said, well, I've lived most of my life in Peoria, Illinois, but we moved down here a few years ago to get away from the harsh winters. I said, well, have you got Confederate ancestors? Because there are Southerners all over the United States, really all over the world. He said, no, I just want to contribute to this monument because it's a monument to veterans. We had ordered the monument. We didn't have another $6,000 to pay for it. And we kicked around some ideas on how we could raise money. I was commander of the Dillard Judd camp at the time. and We decided that we would uh, raffle a Springfield musket. And uh, we bought a, a, a Springfield musket from Shallow Relics for about a thousand dollars, which was a very nice discount off the price tag that that musket carried. is an original 1863 Springfield musket. And I ran a little article, a little ad, in the Confederate Veteran magazine, and I called it the power of the two dollar bill. And uh, I, I used that figure because that's what a raffle ticket cost. We were selling them two dollars a piece, or three for five dollars. And I encouraged people to put two one dollar bills in an envelope and help us with our monument. And that magazine went out to 33, 34,000 people. And I wish we had kept up with a number of envelopes, or Walter could have kept up with a number of envelopes that he opened in the next 
in 30, 40, 60 days that had two one dollar bills in it. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. We got the monument erected on Friday before it was to be dedicated on Saturday. It made us a little nervous that it was so late getting here. But uh, we did get it put up on Saturday afternoon of the reunion. We had a dedication service that was attended by, I don't know, 150, 200 people. I had uh, artillery, had a speaker, the whole nine yards. And it certainly was a, a, a glorious day to know that, uh, that we had accomplished what we set out to accomplish. It was Tuesday, the end of the following week, before Walter Anderson, our treasurer, uh, got by the bank to get uh, you know, all of the mail that, that had been received in the last two or three days, and he had not been there in two or three days because we'd been so busy preparing for the reunion, he just hadn't made that, that trip to the post office. But on Tuesday morning, we sat down in Hardy's restaurant, and we had a sausage and biscuit and our coffee, and he went to opening the envelopes. I had an adding machine, our little calculator, and uh, we knew how much money we had in our monument fund. I started with that balance, and when he'd open an envelope, I'd record the $20 or the $2 or the $10 or whatever. And, of course, we had, uh, we had made a little money at the reunion. We'd hoped to keep part of that in the camp treasury. But uh, by using part of a reunion money and what we got out of those envelopes that morning, we had 67 cents more than we needed to pay for the monument. 